All right, so my goal today is to help you try to create your very own inequality tree. And here's a finished product in Autodesk 123D Design that'll get tossed over to the Airwolf 3D printer. And from the looks of it, looks fairly cut and dried, fairly simple. So the first thing that you're going to do is go to desmos.com slash calculator. And you'll see it here. The goal here is to be able to practice using linear inequalities. And if you were to look at a finished product, you may see one that looks like this. You may also see one with some decorations on it. And ultimately, we're going to tone it down and have it look like this one here. All right, so let's go ahead and start our own. And one thing that you can do is to make it a little bit easy on yourself is you can give yourself the parent function. And so what this will allow you to do is quickly and easily manipulate a line. Okay. And so what we want to try to do is we want to try to think about what a, a tree might look like. We want to be able to have a steep slope at the very highest tier and then lowering the slope as you go out. So I'm going to start off with a slope of uh, let's say 1.6 and we'll say that the y-intercept is 1.6 and we're just going to do this as an equality for right now just to parse it out. So if you notice what I'm doing here is I am using that information that I've gained to start developing some lines over top of what already exists. And I'm also going to go opposite. So now if you, if you can tell here, we've got what may look like the beginnings of the top of that tree. Next thing that I'll do is I'll move down. And we'll have this one go here and there, move it up a little bit. there. So y equals 0.7x plus 8. y equals negative 0.7x plus 8. So now this is going to start making an absolute mess. What we can do is we can do something called piecewise functioning. So opening up the curly brace here, we want to be able to give it a lower bound first and then an upper bound. So we want to have our lower bound. Notice here we've got negative one, two, three, four, and then five. So I'm gonna go from zero, or from, let's see, negative, sure, negative two. So it's gotta be greater than that. And it's gotta be less than zero. Notice here that I've got this nice and confined or constrained um, example. And so I'll do the same thing here.
All right, next up, we have some shading to do. So if I do this, notice that it shades as far down as I can possibly imagine. We don't want that. We want it to shade only to this piece here. So what we're trying to do is we're now trying to limit the range or piecewise the range. So what we are going to do here, let me get the y-axis back, is we are going to go from 6.8, there we go, and we'll do it the other way around. So I'll go y is less than or equal to 6.8, just to clean things up. Oh. y is greater than or equal to 6.8. And the same thing here, y is greater than or equal to 6.8. There we go. We have a total of 12 functions. Minimum is 10, so we've got it covered there. Uh, everything is good. Everything should connect at each of the corners. We want to make sure of that. So when we do our scalable vector group image. Okay. Something else that you can do is you can drop in coordinates, and these would be your decorations. So if I drop in an A comma B, I can drop in strategically a variety of decorations around the tree, okay, and continue on doing that for each of those. But for right now, I'm going to focus solely on the tree itself. Something that became a problem was exporting this out as a scalable vector group image. So what I'm doing right now is I am giving it an all black tone. The reason for that is for some reason, I didn't like the multicolored images that I was trying to toss into The program. So I've got this and I'm going to go to my graph settings. I'm going to remove the grids. I'm also going to remove the axes and I've got my graph here and I shouldn't have any issues with this small gap here but we'll test it out. Next up I'm going to share the graph as an image. I will save, whoop, not save the link, save the image as tall tree. And now I'm going to go to image.online-convert.com slash convert to SVG. I've downloaded the file, tall tree. Click on it in your screen to make sure that it shows up. Um, can have some issues at times. Once you're done, you're gonna go ahead and click Convert File. And bingo. Let me save this one here. And then we'll go into a new one. So now I've got my blank canvas, and what I want to do is I want to go to Import SVG as Sketch. Okay. 
So I'm going to go, I've got mine saved in two downloads here. I'll save it. Notice that this created a giant file. What I can do is highlight the entire thing, go over to scale, and we're just going to drop a point 0.1 in front, a decimal in front of that one, and it shrunk it right up. Next up, highlight it. We're going to move this file to the point in which it is sitting on our graph. And next, instead of trying to wrestle with trying to get this perfect, I can click the home button. And there we have it. Now, I'd like to say, hey, this is great, this is good, but there's a lot of other stuff going on in here. What I need to do is I need to get rid of some of it. So what I'm doing right now is I am deleting out all of the extra lines that this SVG file gave me. There we go. How about that? Looks pretty good. Overall, not something that I would print right away, but not too bad either. Go ahead and click on the gear and click on extrude. We're going to extrude this up a total of five millimeters. And notice what I've got here. I've got this file that's about 50 millimeters tall. It's not going to be very tall, about a little bit less than two inches tall. Uh, so if you wanted to scale it up a little bit, you could. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, one thing I do want to do, just to make it a little bit easier to manage, now that I've extruded it, I'm going to get rid of that original set of vectors. Okay, And you want to add some fillet to each of the sides here. but something to play with, something to mess around with, and you get to customize it however you see fit. Hopefully this helps, and hopefully it gets you a chance to see your inequality tree printed in real life.